one of these days, Muffy, I'll get that starting soon to be like not nor at least centered. Because if it looks so mm. so janky, I'm not gonna lie. How you doing, buddy? Good. Hey All JJ. Right. Um so yeah, how about you introduce yourself? Well, uh my name is Muffy. I have been here before and hopefully I'll be here again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I do computer stuff. Sometimes they work. The days they don't work, I just hope it will the next day. And I'll move on. It's a pretty good uh, feeling for life right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you can't win every day. You know, you can, some days you got to <laughs> say, no, today was not my day. And yeah. Just take the next day one day at a time. Yeah, that works. Um, but uh, yeah, hi, I'm JJ. Uh, and we are doing Kubernetes the hard way on uh, IBM Cloud. Uh, this is part four out of hopefully four. Um, we, we've gotten really, really, really close. Um, and we ran into a server misbehaving last week. Um, I have done a little bit of research uh, just because I am, uh, I'm, I, can, I can taste it, Mofi. I can taste the, taste the victory in my, you know, on the tip of my tongue. But uh, <laughs> we haven't quite got there. Uh, today we're gonna we're gonna stream for just around about two hours. Um, uh, today we can't go too long like we've done in the past because unfortunately um, I have some conflicts. But we always have next week too if this doesn't work. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, so, out of the two hour, I will take a couple of minutes on something else. So JJ, you know, and some of the viewers may also know. I have been lately really thinking a lot about how to take away the need for a dedicated computer to do development work. And I've been looking at a bunch of different solutions, right? I showed you the, the uh, coder thing you can deploy on your own server. And the Visual Studio has, Visual Studio Code has this like online environment, but you need to like the Microsoft Azure or some, you need to have environment in Azure to do that. But GitHub recently also, well, also owned by Microsoft, and I'm guessing it's also backed by Azure, but GitHub, releasing this thing called uh, code spaces, GitHub mm -hmm. code spaces. And, and it's in closed beta right now. So people are slowly getting enrolled. And by some miracle, uh, my, my name was picked out of the hat and I got mm -hmm. next to the code space. And I'm going to, I was going to quickly just show you what it looks like. I mean, if you've seen any um, of the Visual Studio Online environments, it's going to look eerily familiar. Um, the coder looks pretty much the same. So I'm gonna quickly show you this and uh, yeah, I'm gonna sort of walk through. It's not sort of yeah. I think I think this would be this would be. So I think the URL uh, is under. You can either go to GitHub.dev that will take you there, or you could go to GitHub.com/slash/codespaces. Once you get access, it will take you to the same space. And as a test, I created one of my project as a GitHub codespace just to test um, what it is like. Well, like I don't want to delete it. I just want to. Okay, that takes you to the URL. The other one is the actual code space. So I'm gonna click this, and some moment later, this will decide to uh, start up. So I, I'm guessing that again, I'm not guessing. I know for a fact they're running this as a container on some cluster somewhere. And when you request it at the time, they will just give you the space again. And when you're not using it, they will just like delete it to save some space, which is again multi-tenancy. Let's mm -hmm. them allow a lot more people in than if everybody got a like dedicated space would. So I don't hate it, but again, there is a certain amount of time it requires to spin up. In the meantime, this spins up, and I will come back to this again. And I have this another environment that I spun up under Coder. That's 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 your own. You have to have your own VM to be able to do that. You can also run it locally, but if you're running it locally, that means you have a computer that can already run servers. There is no point in running code server on it. So mm -hmm. I'm running this on a VM on the cloud. And yeah, they are the same project open in both places. Well, once this opens up. Um, again, this is running on a VM, so it's always running. So this is probably cost-wise, probably cost a little bit more because the VM is always running. And I mean, GitHub One is free, technically, for open source projects. So there is no comparison per se, like, oh, this one loaded up so fast, and this one is not still not loading up. Um, but Again, if you have the resources to do so, and if you want to have that uh, kind of instant feeling that your computer just like, you just 
clicked on URL in your computer just was available to you. This code coder probably will be the one. There is another one called Tia. Uh, it's like this one. Well, this is probably going to show up some weird things, but um, BS code, I think that's the one. Yeah. There's another project uh, called Tia, and it basically gives you the similar thing. You can run a code space, workspace online. Uh, and yeah, we are a contributor too. Look at that. <laughs> um, I think a lot of this came from, from uh, this was the building block for the Eclipse Che, uh, open, like the IDE. Mm -hmm. so that is also the building block for Code Ready workspace on OpenShift. Um, and Tia is, has, I think they have done a lot more work in the Java community, I believe. Uh, so if you are in the Java ecosystem, want to have that shiny thing, new thing that you want to do code in. Oh, wow. The first time I did, it didn't take that long. Again, this is still in beta, so nothing against the product itself. Uh, I, this video was not sponsored by GitHub <laughs> code space either. But yesterday when I, first time I got it, it actually spun up in a decent amount of speed. So again, this time probably it's a little bit busier time probably. It, it could be any, any number of things, but well, once it, if it comes back, JJ, I will take over the share for another second to show you again. But okay. for now, let's, uh, let's say, uh, let's start the usual program. We can probably take a hiatus in the middle and come back to this for a second. Sounds good. All okay. Right. So, Yes, we're back. We're, we're uh, back on. Uh, okay, so as we all know, um, of course, I don't actually have it up. My bad. Um, give me a second. Oops. Uh, so uh, we are doing Kubernetes the hard way um, uh -huh. on IBM Cloud. And um, we have successfully gotten through um, a huge portion of this whole process. And we are stuck um, right now. It's always the DNS. Always DNS. Um, and if I remember correctly, um, we should be able to see um, Uh, where'd it go? Um, logs. No, where, where are the logs? Logs. Logs. Huh. I mean, okay. I, I think you can also do like a history grab. Look for that. So there's there's our nodes. So our, our master, right. our controller does figure out that there are all our nodes. Um, and then history, grab logs. No, log. <laughs> I guess I, history says it's too small. Yeah. Um, so, well, the short of it is, um, actually, hang on. Um, OK, get uh, config. Uh, pods. Boy, it's been running for six days. Yeah, so we need to delete those guys because that was us trying to debug stuff, right? Right. So we, right. The pods. busy box, well, the pods are running, but they're not talking to any uh, network stuff because they don't have DNS. Yeah, they're they're saying um, the... Be misbehaving. Uh, misbehaving, yes. So... Uh, where I was going with this is um, I was talking to uh, Paul Tchaikovsky, uh, who you may have seen on some of the other streams we've had um, about this whole situation. And um, he suggested uh, something I didn't even think about is uh, IPA and rep IPv6. Oops. IPA. Um, there we go. Uh, so we, there's a chance. Um, 
no. Um, if we go up here, um, if you look there, when we spin up our um, controllers mm -hmm. uh, with DNS, um, because we have IPv6 enabled on these machines, they mm -hmm. actually bind first to IVP6 before IPv4. Okay. And because we don't have an IPv6, we don't, we're not running IPv6. Um, there's there's confusion with the DNS server because it's connected to the wrong thing. So when it puts out the request, mm. it's not actually doing it that way. So um, I believe our next challenge here, and if you want to Google over in the background, Nofi, um, I don't actually know how to do this, but we need to disable IPv6 across our whole cluster. So in the so in in the VM. Yeah, like just get like not have IP not have IPv6 at all. Um, it seems to be that that might be the way to get rid of this whole problem. Let's see. So while you're doing that, I'm going to double check that I get this back into the state we want it to be in before we go any farther. Um, Is that a so would that be a thing under VPC or is that a, like a each VM specific thing? I'm pretty sure it's each VM. So we'll have to figure out the commands of disabling um, IPv6 on Ubuntu. Box. We, what, what do you have? Ubuntu 18 or 20 or 16? Uh, yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it's. Um, I'm pretty sure it's. Oh wait, hold on, no. Uh, let's see. Isn't there a Ubuntu thing? No. Um, Ubuntu 18.04, because it's okay. bitching about 24. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, it's still not like running in air quotes. Yeah, um, this is that misbehaving. So if we do K get um get logs so on on the vm itself you can look at this file called sysctl.conf and there you can add things to add disable ipv6 that's the yeah. one of the links i found so yeah there, there's here's the same error we were seeing um just making sure we still have them here um not seeing the misbehaving again though so misbehaving just, wasn't here misbehaving was uh when we uh, when we looked at some wait what did we look at there was one log we looked at you should want to delete that right yeah well i, I want to delete all this just to get back and delete there we go so then this now there we go okay so we've lost our dns which is our problem our problem child right now right yeah. Okay. So, on the you want to create probably the on the controller you want to create the three on Tmux the three sync pane. Okay. Done. Okay. Now you want to say uh, first do a vim slash etsy slash cctl dot conf. Yeah. Let's see what we have in this file. Okay. Do you see anything IPv6 related in this? There's some forwarding for IVP6, um, except for redirects, IVP6. Yes, they're all commented the out. Yeah, so look for the word IPv6 and see what all of this is there. Oh, wow, IPv8, JJ, patent there you pending. Go. Um, yeah, there's there everything's okay. commented up. So what do you want to add? There is one of them is net IP like uh, net dot ipv six dot conf dot all dot disable underscore ipv six equal one. Net dot ipv six six dot, dot conf conf dot dot all dot disable underscore ipv six equals one. And copy this line down once. Change the word all to default. Copy that line down once. Um, change the word default 
to L0. L O, sorry. Yeah. Like that? Yes. And if Ubuntu Server 1804, you need to add additional lines to each interface you want to disable IPv6. So, so it will be basically net IPv6 conf dot if name dot disable IPv6. Okay. Um, ah. Uh, NAS3. Uh, so let's see. Grab, grab NES3. Yeah, they're all called that. But is that the one we want to disable? Uh, but that doesn't look like IPv6, is it? Yeah, if you see right here, 9 at 6. But that's the L0. And then 9 at 6 right there. Oh, oh okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. NES3. Okay. Oh, they have the IPv4 and v6. Yeah. And it's, see we're going okay. here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. What happened? Didn't lost it. I did, didn't I? Mm. <laughs> okay. So now you want to do uh, ENS three. ENS three. Well, I think you messed up a little bit because the first one has the L0, the second one doesn't have L0. And wait, yeah, the second one doesn't have L0. No, I'll show you right. Mm. Does it have the first one? Okay, that. Oh, he has the yep. three. Ah, ah, hang on. <laughs> hang on. You have to stop the sync pane first. Yep. And that one, don't need that. This one, L0. This one, don't need that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, all right. Once you have done and saved it, uh, save all of them, close all of them. Yep. And one still left. What the hell, man? All right. <laughs> okay. Um, then so next you do next you do sysctl and dash p. No, sys, ctl, dash p. Like that? Yes. So it took the new thing. Well, now, you do, now you do cat, slash proc, slash sys, slash net, slash net, slash ipv6, slash con, slash all, slash disable IPv6. OK, do that. One. One basically means it's disabled. OK. And hold on. Uh, well, yeah, so if you want to, if we want to re-enable re this, we got to just uh, do some, like, just set that to zero, delete them, and it'll be good. Uh, there is also, you can, we could have technically also used Grub to do it. Uh, That's fine. But we already have done it, so we don't, we don't care. You know, it looks like if you look on our IPv or I, IPA. There is no V6. I see that. Yeah. OK. So that's the, look for the word. I, look for the word INET6 in there on, on the IP-A. Nope. None. Excellent. There is no V6 at all. So what, what would be it? Like we have to restart something? Or it would it just uh, automatically take effect? I'm not. I believe it just automatically takes effect. So I think we can go back to doing crap. I'm losing my screens here. Actually, uh, go back. I think we a couple steps back. We we were supposed to test something that we couldn't test. I think this was like pod network. Oh no, this this was not an actual test. This was basically a Google Cloud thing. Yeah. We already set this up though. So. Yes, we have. Yeah. 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 So All I'm right, pretty, pretty sure it's this now. So either this will just work and we're done for the day, mm -hmm. or it doesn't work, then we, can't, we don't know what to do. We don't have to apply three times. No, we don't. I'm, I'm going back over here. MPA, just to verify again. Yep. All right, here we go.
No, this is okay. Things happening. I think oh. so. I sometimes, you know, I just, I don't know if you ever feel like this, but I sometimes like start doing something and then I go get into this state where like I get so distracted from my goal because there's so many side things that I don't, I think I should know. And by if I want to know all of them, that, oh, damn, okay. Oh, the error, wait, what? Internal error occurred resource quota evaluates timeout. The hell does that mean? What does that even mean? You think we should restart these machines? Let's do it. Yeah. Like, I feel like we've... Yeah, let's just reboot. Lost connection. So as I was saying, uh, like, I feel like there are so many side things and that are important to know, but if I start learning them, I'll just get into this, like, next thing I don't know, next thing I don't know. <laughs> I'll never get things done that I wanted to get done. Mm -hmm. It's such a frustrating feeling. I feel like it's just, yeah. And I think we should just like stop making new things. There's too many new things, too many old things that you don't know. And we just keep making new things. And like, we're just learning the new things without knowing the new old thing. It's, it's frustrating. <sighs> Unfortunate. Yeah, this really got angry. Okay. Um, so what I'll Imagine do is... Imagine that the IPv6 network doesn't work anymore. Oh, it's... Jesus. Oh, don't, don't even... Oh, don't you even can joke. just enable IPv6. Mm. That's fine. Oh, what's the command in Tmux? Um... Even Tmux means I can never remember this stuff. Select layout, uh, even, even horizontal. Oh, the end of the horizontal, All right? No, 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 you're right. I can never, I genuinely get select vertical. layout, yeah, even, even vertical. There you go. Oh, oh, my, my GitHub code space showed up. Uh, so there's that. I wonder if, like, because if you're in the part of the part of the project, if you could access this URL, because I have, like, almost like a public URL. Can you try going here? Oh, yeah, send it to me. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for Slack. Send it to you. Uh... Like, can you try going there? Or is oh. it a unique environment only available to me? One of them's up. <laughs> yeah, I tried, okay. and then it was like, oh, no. No, but the, the thing is, you are not part of this. You are not added in this project. Let me try doing that first. I think that would change things. Oh, probably. Or not entirely possible that it wouldn't. Um, all right. Okay, we're in on all of them? Yes, all of them have rebooted. So if I go create a new pane, SSH controller, zero. <coughs> and this again, that was a lot quicker. Check that out. Okay. Yeah, that looks much better. It looks good. I mean, I, I, but it's still, I mean, it's 11 seconds. So in the meantime, uh, we, I get added to my GitHub repo. Ah, oh, 18 seconds. I mean, his example of 30 seconds, I don't know. Yeah. I can look at the logs too. I don't have to just like uh, rely on. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. 
Yeah, same issue. Damn. Well, scroll up. Let me see if it's the same issue. Yeah. Should have stored the lock the last one. Still waiting on. Da, 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 da. Mm. Doesn't look entirely the same, but it probably doesn't. So it's trying eat. it's trying to hit this IP. Uh -huh. I don't I'm I'm betting it's like we can't ping it, right? There's nothing there. Right? So yes. what did we what is supposed to have that IP? Uber release that. So it's a generic, it's supposed to be the API server. Right. That's what I'm I'm reading here. So where the Ooh, someone might have had this problem before. Uh, Wait, scroll up. Let me oh, see. Sorry. Where, Hang on. Like to the top. Where they're where they're doing it? They're trying to do that with Terraform. Uh, okay. Oh my. Again. So. <laughs> This still really isn't giving us the full answer. KubeDNS cannot find API server. Waiting for, I think this is what we got. Yeah, the error. Still waiting. Yeah, it's probably just a different version. That looks like the same. Smells like the same error. Here we go. Uh, If you do a kube cuddle get a series of YAML, you should see the Kubernetes service is one. So do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's there the first IP. You see yep. it. Um, so basically that IP is only available once you're inside a pod trying to talk to another because that's a cluster IP. That's not an actual IP that you can hit. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Cube proxy mode. What is, what is that? What is what is? Oh, that is that is I think uh, done Super using spring. it Ansible. Yeah, looks Ansible to me. Mm. Inventory things like that. This is also two years old. Jeez. <laughs> Which file exactly did you could do the correct this? He doesn't say. So close. So close. Wow, he did a bunch of things there. Okay. It, it just runs there. Don't don't even have any problem. Like, ugh. yeah, same here. No one's. Where is it? Also, it almost looks like a dump of the GitHub repo in here. It does, doesn't it? Uh, where are your like issues? God damn it. Oh, 
Are you Googling this too in, your back, in the background? I'm just watching you right now. I don't even, I, I kind of don't even know to Google this. It's not showing how to fix this problem. Everyone's just like, just like it seems like it works. Maybe is it the routing then? Because it's timing out. Um, it is possible it could be the routing, but like the the, the the address is trying to talk to. It's an internal address that is uh, available to the within the Kubernetes cluster only, right? Like so, all the services have a cluster IP that it, can, it should be able to talk to. Um, it's a timeout, so it's not a certificate thing, so for sure. Yeah. Mm, don't know. In, mm. And a timeout smells like. Um, it's the default timeout of the client itself, thirty seconds. It just didn't do anything. It's not. Yeah, I can't, like, I can't get to it. Yeah. Right. So, like, if you look at the like the code in the Go code of the whatever it's deploying, you will see that Go there, there's probably like HTTP client, which was created with a thirty second timeout. So this isn't even getting. It's not getting to running because there's a health check to make sure, yeah. right? When we got rid of the health check, it's running, but it's not actually going to do anything because again. Uh, I think you can just describe everything under the label. It will be taught twice, but. Hmm? Oh, describe pod. You didn't say describe PO. I always forget that. Yeah, I mean, for describe, we would see. Um, yeah, yeah. I just want to. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Uh, it's still the five hundred three problem. Five hundred three is what error? Five hundred three. That's is... a that's a internal server error. That's like. I'm busted. That's what it, like the server. Oh, yeah, busted. 403 is forbidden. Forbidden. But 500, yep. you know, yeah, it's not the server, right? Uh, hmm. Just gotta come on. There's gotta be something here. Um. I mean. Google this, I guess. Hmm? Google what? Sorry. Like I Googled the error and something came up with the same error. Oh, look up. Go up a little uh, bit. That's a cube admin issue, but we're not using cube admin. But it could be something. Um, let's. So looking here. Cube CTL get SBC. Here's our cluster IP. That's what we're hoping for. But the funny thing is, one of them is 189 registers. So he's starting but dying. How did it even start? Wait, he deletes it. Okay. I mean, oh, it Kubernetes, it, it'll get recreated. So delete, it doesn't matter. Just delete it. Just kill it. No. Wait, it didn't delete? No, it did. 
deleted. Wasn't there. Was there. Same problem. Uh, maybe, okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, maybe did, did un, like hmm? delete the uh, core DNS and deploy it again because it is already running. I think the controller will fix itself. Let it go away. Let it go. Let it go. Sorry, I got two girls. <laughs> Just to check the logs. We'll know one way or another. It's the only the last few digits. So yeah, one of these days I remember. Wait, yeah. that's new. Oh no. no, no, it's the timeout. Oh yeah, it was thirty seconds. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we're getting close. I feel like we got nowhere. At least we know what we're looking for now. I'm doing. Mm. Okay. Ooh, IP forwarding is enabled. I don't think it is. I don't. I think nothing is enabled in that case. No. Well. Oh, <laughs> my bad. If, um, if, I think you just want the file, honestly. Yeah. Like the file which means for IPv6, just add that in there. Or we need to do it for all of them, by the way. Yep, see right there. Yeah. That could be something. Let's do it on all, all three of them. Can you go through the docs real quick to see if we ever had to do the forwarding? Um, I'm doing this. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound, sound familiar. It could be something that was done when the hop was set and something Google Cloud automatically does for them. I can't be too sure, but hold on, let me check. Hold on, next is Hardware. Hardware, Hardware. All right, there's IPv forward for everyone. Yes. All right, it's enabled. There was a there are some firewall rules. I don't know if you said those. That's Google Cloud specific. Looks like there is looks like there's a firewall rule that allows us to ICMP and HTTPS. There are some rules there. Um, NCD is there, HTTP is there, NCD, QBAD, QBAD server is there, NCD. Nothing too crazy. A bunch of ideas there. Okay. Yeah. I think if we yeah, have firewall phones. Hmm? Yeah, I'm looking at like step three, like compute resources. That's where there are some firewall stuff in the let's say tower repo. I don't think we're there because ours ours is not crashed back. Da, 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 look back. Yeah. 
We also probably should restart this. I restart our, our nodes, um, mainly because the last time we did that network didn't take effect until. Yeah, good point. Good point. Um, and did we do the, after we changed it, did you do CCTL-P? Yeah. And did you do the cat to see that was updated? No, I didn't verify it, but I, I was pretty confident. Okay. Okay. So can you go back to the one that we followed to do this? Like what, what was the claim and what was the problem with, I didn't look through that problem too well, so. Uh, so this was, Following master. I see the reflector go, so it looks, but mm -hmm. he's, one of them is running for some reason. Uh, well, okay. Oh, Raspberry Pi, look at that. Mm. Nice. I want to actually buy a bunch of Raspberry Pi 4 because the new one with the eight gigs of RAM can actually do some work. Mm -hmm. It's like two gigahertz uh, or like 1.6 gigahertz processor, eight gigs of RAM can take up to 128 gigs of this is like a micro SD card. Be solid. Oh. Uh, your version. Yeah, I didn't do the IP tables for it except we're gonna fix that in a second. Okay. Finally, pass keep proxy configuration in with the cluster CIDR, cluster CIDR equals. Well, I think we have that when you when you started that. Yeah. Uh, hey, what actually works? There's another comment under that. Right here. Mm. What does CIDR stand for? Which one? CIDR. The, the, the Cider. Um, whatever. That's. Um, it's the slash of the subnet. I forget what it stands for oh. exactly. So like slash twenty four, <laughs> slash thirty two, whatever. <laughs> I suspect you're hitting issue 196. Execute order of 66. I don't actually know if we've checked that. Um, we should double check that. Well, that's interesting. Okay, there we go. Let's see. What 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 are the interesting what we're looking at? Oh, that's a manifest stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not there. Um what is the file resource look at again? No, it's not. It's not we don't we don't have it. It, it must have been an older version. It, um, yeah, it's three years old. That's like yeah. lifetime. What does IP table save to? Should have outputted uh, what the IP table's rules are. There's none. <laughs> so it's not an IP table's problem. Um, it's not doing anything. So if we come back over here, go back into this guy, check out that. There it is. Um, we come back here. Apply Q CTO or DNS. Look at the logs. I, think, I don't think waiting for it to run is ever got us anywhere. It really hasn't, has it? I don't have to have complete, of course. Um, Same error. Yep, same problem. Okay. Hmm. Maybe if we Google that. I mean, that's the literally the source code, isn't it? Yeah. This is closer, and it's 2020. Here we go. It's 
So they're using Weave to do the network overlap. Yeah. Hmm. 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 So you guys are temp shell. Oh, wait, what is temp shell? It's just a pod, it looks like. Oh my god, this is so not what I'm looking for. It just goes off. No route to host that. Oh. Mm. Doing this, can this happen? I mean, oh no, it's not, it's not, it's, it's an IO timeout, it's not a no route to host, right? Uh, yeah, like that's that's the problem. It's not, we don't have a oh, god damn it. Yeah, we, we looked at the IO timeout here or no. No, we never, nothing really came up. Mm. That one. Well, that's the dashboard. Over heading is the hard way. I think that's the one, uh, as we saw that issue before. You did? No, not this one, no. If it's a routing issue or ACL security group issue, also handy command, but I don't have anything between it. Solve by adding the route to 10100 on the control API node. You know, this actually gave us something. That's the one of them, but I think he somehow got two in there. So there is one of the actual IP. And the second one is the kind of like a range. Hmm. 
What is the route that Shen Kuan did? Shows a routing table. Ah, okay. Cool. So this right here creates 200. Oh, yeah, we don't have, we're all 140. I modified the Q proxy mode from IP tables to IPVS and it worked. The fuck does that mean? I saw this somewhere else as well. I didn't know how to, uh, what to think of that at the time. I mean, I don't even know what that means. How do you change this stuff? So I think like, this was, this is something when you deployed the Pod or so. It's like a, something pretty lower level. Like it's a, something we did. You have done pretty early on, I believe. Oh really? Um. Yeah. Can you look for this cube proxy? This one? Uh maybe. Yeah, most likely. I was in that same file with um, Yeah, I don't... Can you just look up what, like, change Q proxy from IP tables to IPVS? Because yeah, I think one of the... Yeah, let's let's look at the Calico one what they're talking about. Okay, so, so before you begin. Cool. cool. To... Yeah. The fuck? All right. I'm not seeing this. Go back. I don't think I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um I mean, again, if you're this, setting up. There was this Q proxy config. No, so, no that's, that, that's not it. Oh, it's not? Oh, it could be the file. Yeah, keep, look at the Q. Was that a file, Q proxy config? Yeah, hang on. Ah, and then that's the user. Sorry, I, I was I got excited. I was like, yes. So we're looking for the letter IP tables and trying to replace that with. Yeah, it's no. not there. It's probably not there then. Okay. Okay, so that was a bust. Um. When you looked for the change, right? So yeah, well, it's not didn't help. Also, what is IPVS at the beginning? Enabling IPVS on EKS, that might help. Oh, that's an article by us? Oh, cool. Oh, here it is, QProxy Extra args. We know we want to go to worker for this, wouldn't we? Would we? At this that's point, what, that's what's actually running the pods, right? No, There's the no master of the pod. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. You're not using Docker. I think we're using container D in it. Are we? Yes. We are. 
Nope, we're not using IP VS admin either. There's a div tag. Oh, okay, that's a question people ask that we are asking here. Keep proxy startup argument. We where is a keep proxy startup argument? No, this thing mm -hmm. again. We were here. Okay, it's, cool. it's, in the, it's in the sys. It's in the sys file. Um, yeah. Etsy, systemd, um, network. No. System, system. Q. Hmm. I don't see the API. Huh? proxy. It could be API. Server thing. No. Look for the word mode. That's authorization mode. Is there any other mode? No. No. Yeah. Okay, Wait, what other, what other services? The Where's the Q proxy run then? Hold on, hold on. This one. How are you configuring? Uh, how are you configuring your proxy? Maybe you need to find config file first. Uh, okay. You should be able to change the key proxy startup arguments with redeploying the cluster without redeploying the cluster. Okay. Let's let's look at the uh, big list. Whatever. So there is a queue proxy CLI tool. Yeah, that's what actually runs the thing. Uh, so look at look at the word mode. There you go. Where did you find it? Oh, there's IPVS IP tables. No, that we want to just switch the mode first. So look for the. I think we're in I K A. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll find it. A little more. Proxy mode. There it is. Okay, so we need to figure IPv out where the hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at some level we ran this thing called Q proxy or something else ran this thing called Q proxy. Yeah, this runs on. Where? It's on the bur It's on the worker nodes. That's the reason why we're not seeing it. <laughs> All right. There we go. There's a Q proxy service. Ooh, 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 yes. No. I mean, it's possible that we didn't set any mode because the default is set. Yeah, we didn't. So back here, proxy mode, the best available currently IP tables. If blank, yeah. So they, they just they use IP tables. So we're going to change it to IPVS, I guess? Sure. Why not? Let's just add uh, something here and there. I think it's called Q proxy mode. Proxy mode equals IPVS. Is it an equal sign? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you we're doing it, you'll sign everywhere, so you might do it. I think you can also not say equal and to a space, just work the same way. All right, do you have to not restart the service or something? Yeah, system CTL restart Q proxy. Oh, God damn it. What happened to our daemon? 
because we changed it. It got angry. Ah. Um, okay. All so right. now we. So heat proxies has been changed to IPVS. I am still not 100 sure what IPVS is supposed to do for us. That not, was not doing anything. But I mean, let's just delete everything. You to, oh, while you're at it, you want to restart the Kubernetes service? I can just delete. Yeah, let's wait for a second. See what it looks like. Okay, get service. There we go. Yeah. All right. So apply. Straight for the logs. I want no point in wasting time. Yep. It's BQJ2F. All right, same issue. And if you wait like about 30 seconds, we'll get our classic timeout, I think. Yep. Okay, so that was the answer. Oh, we didn't restart the thing. We would restart the node. Did we have to restart the node? It's a network change. I don't know. You want to just restart everything? Yeah. And like over time, we have made so many different Quite changes. changes. Yep. Right. So I don't even know like exactly what combination of this is like. It's not working for what combination of this. Like there is probably just this one small thing we missed, but like now if we even if we go back and fix that, we have changed so many other things. Mm -hmm. Fortunate. This is uh, challenging. That's a good word for it. Well, you know, it's, it's not Kubernetes the hard way for nothing. I do want to come back and use kind of like the tools available in the ecosystem to install Kubernetes manually too, just to mm -hmm. get a compare. I mean, obviously you have your managed Kubernetes from a bunch of different vendors, but each of them are like, I doubt any of the vendors install Kubernetes this way. Oh yeah, no, no one, no one does. Right, you have to be, uh, like you have to have a lot of hate for yourself to go through this. It's one of those things, though, that I really have learned more about the Kubernetes, like all the different pieces and what they do. So this is, has been valuable. No, I mean, like, of course. Just I mean, can't, I, get a, can't, can't get across the finish line. That's the problem. I, I, I don't doubt it for a second that it's, um, it's extremely valuable. But at the same time, um, it's, it's like it's all the things are built on top of other things. That's what I was mentioning earlier, right? So there are so many things newer popping up, even for you being like a seasoned sys admin. And for me, it's like just newer mm -hmm. thunderstorm that's happening. But if I spend the time in learning about all these other tools that are underneath, like when, like where's the balance between learning new versus filling the gaps of old, right? So. Oh yeah. Wow, you're on page three on Google. That's that's desperation, baby. That's I know, I know. It's how close I'm getting here. Like I really wanted to get this done today. And I really do have a hard stop at the top of the hour. So All right. Well, well, this is coming back up. I gotta go get some caffeine anyway, so I'm gonna yeah. put the uh, be right back up for a minute, and then um, it'll be less than this five minutes. But um, I just wanna, I need to get some caffeine. Okay.
There you go. We're back. Hello. Uh, well, we're back from the well break. And before we get started on the punishing experience that is trying to deploy Kubernetes the hard way, I was going to quickly show you the GitHub workspace stuff that I was trying to show earlier. Um, so JJ, this is, well, this is my one. This is code.moviecode.dev where I have coder running. And this is the environment I have, the same project or our Kubernetes admin. And this is what it looks like under uh, VS Code. Or not mm. VS Code, sorry. It's under uh, GitHub Workspace. I mean, you have the same theme support. Another cool little thing they have done here is, is that uh, they have pre-installed, well, Node, not Do, <laughs> and which Go, which Rust, uh, which Java, which wow. Python. Yeah, they just have all this stuff set up, pre-installed for you. Right. What else? What else is this interesting for people? Uh, Ruby is it? That's how you find it. Yeah, you have Ruby in there. Um, can't even think of anything else. Which Scala? Is Scala a thing you can just look up like this? I don't think I don't so. Know. I think Scala is called something else. Um, what is this? Uh, Haskell. Haskell is not there. I don't think. I think it's two. I think it's two L's. Two L's. So I'll try that. I'm also trying to. Okay, the item thing has covered there. Um, yeah, so the bunch of this tool is already pre-installed. I mean, on my one, it's a it's a VM, so I have to I have whatever I have installed. Um, they seem to have a lot more, just like the programming stuff of things. Those are ones that are mostly used. I don't know what the CLI tool for C sharp is. Uh, mono, I think. No. no. I don't know C hash. I don't. That doesn't make no sense. No. I don't, Dot net something. So I, I'm pretty sure they would have C sharp stuff here. Given you know Microsoft GitHub C sharp makes sense. But again, if you are coming in from any programming language that you're used to, things like JavaScript, Go, uh, Python, Java, you're covered out of the box, which is pretty nice. I like it. And uh, yeah, it, it's just a VS Code environment, right? Like uh, it, the, from the logo, it looks like the VS Code Insider. It's not the pure VS Code. Uh, which doesn't mean anything. Like I think VS Code Insider is kind of like the Chromium of Chrome, um, right? So there is a Chromium mm -hmm. browser that you could make use of, and you could also make use of the Chrome browser. I think VS Code Insider gets featured a little bit earlier, so it's in the beta stage, or it could just mean it's on beta stage. That's why there's even a different color logo. Um, yeah, so uh, you can probably sign up for beta now. Once you get access, it's pretty cool. It gives you another place where you can write and run some code. We all within GitHub, so GitHub is becoming more and more of an ecosystem rather than just a code repository. I mean, GitHub has not been a code, just a code repository for a while now, but it's it's kind of like taking another step forward in the becoming all-encompassing developer workflow. Start at GitHub, finish at GitHub kind of situation, which is cool and scary at the same time, but you know, scary cool. So JJ, back to you. Cool. Um, excuse me, I am struggling here, Mopi. Um, yeah, this, this is, uh, this is, okay, let's see if our workers are back up. All right. And then our controllers. All right. So we should be able to now come back over here. Go back in this guy. It's uh, still not running. Oh, that's new. Yeah, that's actually. Yeah, that's that's moving forward. That's, that's okay. Dial to see if the connection refused. Well. Okay. What is the ten two fifty port? What is that port? Is that port Pardon. open anywhere? Well, it's on worker zero. Workers, that's that's no, that's that's not worker. That's controller zero. No, it's worker zero. Um, yeah, hang on. So, worker zero, worker zero, worker zero. So something is not running on worker zero. Yes. Uh, 
you know, you just change the IP table stuff. So could be something. <laughs> yeah. So proxy. Few proxies running. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We are getting some logs here though from it. Is it? Is it... Um, Q. Q what? Mm -hmm. Q was not running. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's disturb that bad boy. Let's fail. So that's there something. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Journal. HC. That's not ours. Here's well, a cube. So better logs for some of our logs. Who say it is? Is this log? Here we go, cube what? C group, no, failed to running swap is not supported. We don't have, sw ah, crap. All right, um, swap. So we need to go oh, to oh, each of these. We started and swap, restarted again, huh? Yep. We, can we make this like the default that, that then just keeps turning back on? Is that something I, I, yeah, I don't actually know. Hmm. Um, what was it, the pains thing? Um, oh, uh, set, set something. Sync, sync pain. No, 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 oh. the, the, the evenly. Oh, I think it's a set, select layout and uh, even vertical. Thank you. All right, so. Sync or set sync transparency on SSH worker um, off zero one two huh? on swap off. Swap off. What? I thought it was swap off on word. What the fuck? Um, swap. Disable swap. Exactly what I'm looking for. Swap off A. Really? I hate you. System CTL start cube. What system CTL start cube, but You don't think that look at the status, huh? Yep. There we go. Since All right. we're going in. So now we can go back here. And what we'll do is time ah. <laughs> All right. Damn it. Ugh. Uh... Okay. Where are you mad at loss, sir? Same. Um, could we try this on classic infra at some point then? 
to see if there's some network issues with PC we're facing that we're not setting it proper. I mean, well, we can run through the VPC real quick. I mean, yeah, but the, the whole setting it up. No, like no, no, but the, the, the purpose is to figure out that what are the differences that we're missing to set, right? Yeah. Uh, let's take I a look anyway. Think, I almost think it will be faster to like go through and deploy it. Like, again, we're coming back next week and when we come back and we'll do it, but it will be faster to come back and uh, go through the whole thing for, on a fresh six set of set of six VM that has nothing on them. I think you're oh using God. too much of your CPU. Oh my God. Oh my God. Really? Is that how they tell you you're no longer employed, JJ? I think so. What? <laughs> what? Uh, just try a different browser, I guess. I don't know what's happening. Well, or we can put them down. I don't think. No, I just logged in. So. No, that makes no sense, but I'm not going to fight it. Yeah. Uh, Pesnot says, I'll be frank, it's actually quite all, quite frustrating. Um, we are stuck at a networking problem um, internally on our Kubernetes cluster <sighs> that we're building from scratch uh, where we're getting timeouts from the workers talking to something inside of the kubelet and the service um we're s the timeout assume like we thought it was <laughs> firewall problems um it seems that the gcp networking is a little bit more what's a good word for it um isn't so obfuscated away so we are in the process of figuring out what the differences between our setup and GCP's network is right now. Is that accurate, Mofi? Yeah, close enough. Yeah, I think, I think like as I was saying earlier before we went to the break, right, we, we have made so many changes or so many like, as we kept looking up and we found issues that looked similar to what we were facing. So we kept doing everything just to see some improvement. So all in all, our issues stayed the same. Now, if one of the things we did took us backwards, we didn't even know because it is failing at a such early point. Mm -hmm. it, like, so, so eventually, let's say by some miracle, we are spending uh, ungodly amount of time. We figure it out how it's supposed to work. And then it fails because we've made some other changes and we made so many of them. I don't even know like what changes we made so far, right? So. At, at you know, some of, at some time, it might also be worth like taking all we learned and then starting from scratch again, because we can then we can do a cleaner one and we can document it proper. Yeah, we're getting real close to that that point. We were, yeah, we well we are. But I don't know if we exactly are still because we're stuck on the same spot and we did like eight different things so far, right? So we might have like, like kind of moved, like turned really cold from where, where we were, but our error happens at such, such an early level, we would, wouldn't be able to tell. Oh, you, okay. So your policies allow everything to everything. Got it. And I'm really allowing everything to everything now. Oh, nice. Look at that. Yeah, like I'm like, <laughs> do not pass go. Do not pass. You have pass you have a computer. Come on through. You have a computer. Come on. Like, I don't yeah. have a computer yet. Are you buying it? Come on. You 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 are okay too. You come. Yeah, I'm going to Best Buy. Okay, yeah. Come on through. Good. 
God, if that had worked, I was gonna I was gonna just table flip and walk away. <laughs> yeah. It didn't though, right? Wait, that's not I the didn't... security group I've got signed oh to. My it. God, you just like opened up a security for something completely random that's some production poor production application is running. Wait, no. Ah. No, 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 no. These are security groups. These are different than access control lists. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, what's the difference between an access control list and a security group? Well, access con- I don't think so. A security group is more like a, you set up, it's almost like access policy group we said, an access control list. What? Well, hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Access control list is also all, all for us. And then security group, which is this one. Rules. Everything come through. Oh. Weird link. So it's, just, oh, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. it's just all yeah right right right, right. no no point in having those in there yeah right i sometimes actually like to have the extra redundant mm-hmm. rules because at some point you would want to harden the security and delete the all one then the individual one will still stay mm. but i respect that but yeah I mean, again, I don't think this is something we will be running any production work with any, any ever. No. Uh, no and no, once we'll... we get to that point, we'll probably redo this whole thing again just to document it well for next JJ and Mofi who's going to struggle through this. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as this is uh, working, I'm nuking it from orbit and we're starting over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least maybe we start over, then nuke it. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. Um, we looked at the routes. We set up some routes there, right? Yeah, that's not like doesn't hurt, right? Yeah. Uh, so you see the destination CID are set here, and there is one of the GitHub, one of the Stack Overflow article that set this one in there as well. Both of them. When you did yeah. the when you did the. So this is we have those IPs here, but it's not set anywhere. Are we, are we trying to do that or not? I mean, that was a yeah. That was the um, hang on. Uh, this not this one. You don't need that anymore. Uh, don't need that anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, it was the um, it was the static routes that you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had the routes, but he also set up. Uh, yeah, here it is. Like right here. This, yes. So I mean, there's nothing stopping us from doing this. Yeah, I know. yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so maybe put that one uh, next to it so that we know what IPs we have, right? We have to do it for individual. Uh, is it controllers? Yeah, we have to do it. For yeah, this one. So basically, we just make static routes. This, this is when, again our routing is not proper on the thing. And do we do this on the control? No, we did this on the API server, right? So the oh, it's on the controllers. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Come over to the controllers here. That works. So route add net ten two hundred zero zero. But I think they're different for each of them, right? Zero yeah. one two. Yeah, hang on, hang yeah. on. Hang on. I'm, with you. I'm with you. Two, two. Well, we've got to put each one of them in for here because the route isn't finding it. So then, gateway of. Then we come over here. And then that is 13 for us right here. So we do it for we do it three times? Yeah. yeah that's okay. correct. We're basically doing this route thing, the thing that was, which is another reason, it could be another timeout problem right there. That's, that's legit. That's legit. Uh, two thirteen. Okay, and then we can do 
one. And one two, is fifteen, I think. Fifteen. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Wait. File exists. What all does that mean? Oh, there we go. I think that's okay. Um, is it? We'll I'll find out in a second. Okay. 14. 14. Route dash N. Oh, God damn it. Hang on. Just so we can actually read it. Route dash N. There we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. That's all the ones we want. So. Why did it keep that, saying file existing? I think it was just a. Okay, now do the now do the kubectl the the big JSON path thing on from the issue to see two thing come back. No. No. Maybe the kubelet needs to be restarted. Um, no. No, needs to be restarted. Delete, delete, delete. Delete. Just keep on deleting some of the pop up. Get SVC. Also, can you do a can you do a K get pods dash and cube system? Yeah. Okay, can you do kubectl get fast as a all namespace? Let me see if there's anything running on this. Nope. Because we haven't even gotten DNS installed, and that's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to see that we've got two URL vectors. Oh. Because we added the route, but did it actually add anything? Oh, God damn it. FRQDJ. Same. Yeah. Nope. Mm. Man, um, okay. So, is there any way for you to break in to this, one of these pods? Right, K or Q. CTL. Without exact. the DNS, we can't do that either because like, the network is not sending the traffic back and forth between us. Wait, you didn't find what? You didn't find what? Oh, you didn't have, you have to do dash and cube system. Oh, thank you. Error executing command. OCI runtime exec failed. This here blah, blah, blah. starting container process paused. Oh, because it's not started. It's not running. It's zero of one, right? Oh yeah, I guess that's true. So one thing we could do technically to make it start is that get rid of the health check like we did. It will start. Oh, yeah. But I, I don't know what we're trying to expect, like you know, access by getting into it. Well, I was just just gonna try to like see what we can reach like is it can it only not reach the api server can it get anywhere mm. else mm. like is it yeah. just specifically built into the like is it having a problem with kubernetes or is it have a problem with like all of networking you know at least that was my next like logical step yeah i hear you 
area. But I'm, I'm at a loss here. Yeah, it's quite frustrating. I'm gonna it really have to is. sugarcoat yeah. this. It is. Mm. Our routes are still there. Yeah, so ping 10, 200. Wait, hang on. This will not go anywhere. Exactly. Ping 10, 200, 1, dot, one. no. SVC, name spaces. Ping. I mean, these are these are virtual IPs anyway, so you wouldn't yeah. be able to access this. Oh, okay, good point. Device. Good point. Um, I mean, one thing you could try doing is change it to node port and see if you get a node port it can hit. Um, like if you change the Kubernetes service to uh, from cluster IP to node port, and then try to hit it that way and see if it can talk to it. But I'm still, I don't know if that, that we saw that, but like once we did the big JSON path thing, did we see two different IPs or no? We saw uh, three different, or three different IPs. The no, same no, IP we, we saw earlier. Yeah, but like in the example that person commented, he had each, for each line he had two, right? Mm, no. No, yeah. So it's 10, 240 and the 10, 200, the range one. So, mm. so that's one node. So we should see total six IPs come back, right? We should see the 10, 240, 129, 13, and 10, 200, on the same line, ideally. What does it mean? source destination check. IBM Cloud. Seems to try to check out the CLI if saying something important, the very first URL. Maybe it's the documentation. PC source destination check.
So this right here, damn it. Modify instance ID, no source destination check. It's AWS, thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is that the equivalent in our cloud? Yeah. What does that mean, right? It, it, it changes security rules. It, 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 it specifies whether source session is enabled, which means that the checking is enabled false. Means it, thanks. <laughs> the hell, man! <laughs> like that's. So, source checking. Maybe source checking is what we should be looking for. I mean, I think no. I think we're checking uh, destination check. Okay. At this rate, we, like soon we're gonna be just going to the IBM IBM dot com bot page, <laughs> looking about learning about you know company. I just want to turn the shit off. That allows ping. Oh, that makes sense. Ugh. I turned all this off. Hmm. Like, it doesn't even look like we have something. Like, this is not bringing up anything on our documentation. Mm -hmm. Paste GCP. So, using routes. Describing destination check. Here we go. By default, and destination check for packages so far. GCP create blah can for IP forward. So that's exactly what Kelsey was saying in this one. Um, So is it, are we looking for IP forward then? The I'm assuming the firewall level is checking for this then, because so if we run this one. Okay, and then we run this guy. 
Continue, cuddle, get pods. No, it's container creating still. Come on, you stupid piece of shit. There we go. So we got the name Carl. Goes. That's actually pretty interesting. Yeah. Why is that automatically getting a random name? I don't know. One thing at a time, Murphy. <laughs> okay, we're in it now. Wait, we, we couldn't get in yesterday with uh, with Virtue Busybot last week. Right? I don't know. Ping. Da, 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 da. We can get out to the. We can get out to Google. Okay. Ping. www.google. Try the 10:32 from hang here. On, hang on, here. Hang on, hang on. Google.com. We have no DNS. So if we vim, let's see resolve.com. Gonna try nano. I hate you, Murphy. We can do DNS resolution. So we actually have a working, like right now, we have a cluster that can spin up pods and can do DNS resolution, but our internal DNS resolution is not working. So if we come back over here and do kubectl get pods, our controllers see the core, the the curl pod running everywhere. But if we try to ping dot ten dot what was it? Ten dot thirty dot zero dot one. Thirty dot zero dot thirty two one. Thirty two? Yeah. Nothing. Nor ten, which was the default DNS that we just saw a moment ago. So mm -hmm. we cannot we can't actually talk to our services. As we see, yeah. I mean, we're not talking to port 80 of that service. Right? We're talking to port 443. So when you do just uh, 320.1, aren't you trying to talk to port 80? This is just pinging. So this is trying to hit another port. Um, oh, if you want to do the okay. curl, curl, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. S, 10. Uh, 32.0.1. It can't even, it doesn't know where it is. Like it can't, right. it can't find it at all. So our route here, anything that we send, we need to send through 10.200.01. So if I ping 10.200.101, we get there because that's how we got out to the real internet. So if mm -hmm. I do uh, 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 trace route, don't have trace route, damn. Okay, so we have a cluster. So huh? he, go back to his issue where we deployed the Carl pod from. Mm -hmm. Okay, when he tried that, okay, okay he tried to call that. We got a connection time dot. We get doing the same exact thing, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Firewall rule. Da, 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 da. Okay. Deleting after removing these secrets, both were created. Then again, then I created again the DNS replication controller, and it worked as expected. I hope this helped you. I don't know what those secrets are for. The fuck? Yeah. Woo. <sighs> I mean, we have gotten farther because we can get into a pod and can actually talk. Yeah, to I, don't know, I don't know what that fixed it. 
I, yeah, last week we couldn't. We had the same issue, but we couldn't say like exec into any pod. So I'm not even sure what 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 magic fixed it. Yeah, that's fine by me. <laughs> like we made progress, so we can now actually talk to things. Yeah, so that's good. It's not 100%. But it's pretty damn good. And I think I think I'll call it there. Yeah. You want to actually do another thing. You want to um, start up the busy box, the example on Kelsey's thing before we end. Because okay. yes, last week we couldn't execute the busy box one. Remember? That is true. So this was, I think, twelve part of part. Yeah. I went to back. Oh, sure, I did in there. <clears throat> so it's in uh, chapter 12, I think. Yeah, 13. Or 13, yes. Is it? No, it's not. It's 12. No, no, 13. Or is it? Yeah, here it uh, is. Busy. Well, no, that's the NS lookup of Kubernetes. Oh, I guess this one. Yeah. All right, there's our busy box. Grab this. And it won't work because we can't get to. We are running the command though. We're into it. Yeah. So last week it didn't do that. Last week it didn't yeah. do it because, yeah. So in a very roundabout way, there is progress, but still not satisfied. Yeah. We were in, We still have DNS problems. Wait. Huh? Look at what the output supposed to look like. Uh, it's supposed to give us the, this, mm -hmm. but it right. even, it, it, yeah, it, it didn't, it's, it's trying. Hmm. Does NS lookup have some verbose mode? Yeah, sort of not great though. There's other tools to do it, but that's still, that's still progress though. That is still progress. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Couldn't resolve. We're um, we're we're stuck at DNS problems again. So, all right, sir. JJ, why is DNS? Yeah, it's it's just the bane of everyone's existence. Ugh. All right, sir. Well, we'll try again next week. I think. I think we'll try again yeah. next week. Well, you know. Uh, until then, we have uh, tomorrow. We have a very exciting stream with uh, yes, Postman, where we're learning some Postman tips and tricks, how to make a developer life easier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It'll be fun. So we'll, so we'll, I'll see you there and our friend from Postman. It sounds good, sir. All right, buddy. I will talk to you at a later time. Bye. Bye, JJ.